Buenas, buenas. Welcome to Music Marketing TV. I'm Kevin Ochoa, and today we're going to be taking a look at Fat Filter Volcano 3, which is the newest addition to the Fat Filter Creative Bundle. As we can appreciate here, we have the full size Volcano 3 now instead of the smaller Volcano that we used to have. We still have the availability to have four filters, which we can, you know, assign them per channel or mid side. If we want to get really crazy, we also have the new revamp modulation slots or sources as we do in Fat Filter Timeless 3 and also Fat Filter Saturn 2. So we have a very visual representation of what we're doing now. As you can see, when we add a modulation to a filter, we're very quickly able to see what it's doing to our signal. Another cool thing that we have here is the drive button or the drive knob. Here we can add up to 18 decibels of drive signal. That's very, very impressive. We also have new filter types and we're going to get to them in a bit. And we have new filter shapes as well. So we have plenty of new cool things here. Also the keyboard tracking here. It's very, very nice. So. We have a, a plethora of uh, options that we have on top of what was already available in Fat Filter Volcano 2. So without further ado, let's play back this demo. This demo is based on the Benny Benassi uh, Satisfaction track, a legendary track. Now, when you first listen to Satisfaction, you might think it's a very simple track to recreate. There's very little instrumentation. It's very sparse. However, once you start to listen to the sound design in the track, you start to understand that there's lots of modulation going on, lots of filtering going on on the lead. And then you start to hear the noise in the background and how that's also being filtered. And throughout the whole entire track, there's a lot of modulation that happens. So here with Volcano, it's easy to do that. As you are going to be able to hear in a second, when you add Volcano and Saturn and um, Pro R, we get this really nice sound effect that sounds pretty much like the lead inside Satisfaction. So without further ado, let's take a listen to the demo track. So there's a demo track. And what we're going to do is we're going to break down the lead and the sound effects. So we're going to break down the how we get this really distorted, really reverent sound. 
at the beginning of the track. And then we're going to look at the sound effects, which is the noise right here. And how you can get these tonal white noise effects. And then we're going to also take a listen to the vocal effects here. So let's let me just get it on time. And then it's this one. Okay. You can hear how it's a very soft sound that's being reverberated by a five second reverb and then we're running it through volcano. So there's lots of little layering that's going on here with the, the filters. Lots of little points of saturation here and there with Saturn 2. But let's break down the sound one by one. So here we have the lead at the very beginning of the track. We have uh, the far distant lead that sounds like it's coming from some other room in a nightclub. And that's quite easy to achieve. When you have the right tools, like 5 Filter Volcano, a bit of Saturn 2, and Pro R. So first, let's look at the Pro R, because that's a little bit easy to look at. We just have a huge hall. But instead of having a really long decay, we shorten that to be 2.5 seconds instead of something that's longer, like 5 seconds. And then that's being automated, of course, throughout the track. And for the main feast of today, it's Fat Filter Volcano time now. So here we have the volcano. As you can see, I'm making use of all four filters, except the third one, which is an all pass filter that I turn on and off as a please uh, take a listen to this. Hear how when you turn on that all pass filter, it still creates some variation in the sound. Well, that's some changes in phases. But before getting far ahead like that, let's uh, reload a volcano and start to recreate this from scratch. So here I have the volcano. Let's set it to be clean. And with the other volcano muted, let's go ahead and mute the Pro R as well. And the other Pro R, that's the main reverb for the lead synth. And I believe there's a timeless somewhere there. Or a free delay. There we go. So there's a sound. It's being a bit of a saturated through the transformer. And by the way, that's just a saw lead that's coming out of Fat Filter Twin. just with some portamento. So again, here's the volcano. And first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to grab a filter and we're going to set it to be, in my case, it was a low pass. And what we're going to do is we're going to set up a MIDI modulation source. In this case, we're going to use the MIDI out from port number four inside FL Studio, which is sending MIDI to Volcano 3. Let's go to processing or settings. We're going to put an import port. We're going to set it to four. I had already done that before, though. And then let's close this window down. Now, based on this MIDI, we can send trigger signal to a modulation envelope generator. And in this case, we're going to set it to MIDI, right? Now we're going to set sustain as we please, and we're going to bring the filter down, filter frequency down. We're going to put the envelope in here. And now you can hear that with the ability to have the filter envelope triggered by MIDI 
and also have the filter uh, key tracked by MIDI, we can set this to be sounding as, as if we have the filter within the synthesizer itself. So it's really cool. So this means that you can do something like chord stacking and just use Five Filter Volcano instead of setting up the individual filters on a bunch of super solids, right? And modulate them, and filter them out with only one Fat Filter Volcano and only have to automate once instead of automating four or five times on a super soft stack, okay? So let's set this up to be there. The next thing I'm gonna do is introduce keyboard tracking. So let's set this to be a new MIDI source. We're gonna add keyboard tracking and we're gonna set this to be modulating the frequency. And we're gonna set the frequency to be on C so we can keep them in track. The next thing I did was I introduced a high pass filter and I set it to be around 24 dBs or 12, somewhere around there. And again, we're going to set it to be on C and we're going to introduce the keyboard tracking to it. And all the way as well. let's put this on pattern mode. And here we're gonna be able to appreciate the difference between these high notes and these lower notes. And there we go. That's how we start to modulate the sound. I believe I might've put this filter a little bit uh, lower. Let's set it to the C right there. I think I was right. Let's double check. Yeah, somewhere around there. Pretty much the spot. And there's also a a peaking that I did here with the with band number four. It could have just as well have been band three, but band three I started using it as a all pass filter. Okay with 48 dB so and some peaking. But for now, let's turn that off and let's go to the four. And we're gonna put this on, I believe the track is it's somewhere on here. That's actually higher. Okay, let's put it there. And I just realized that the filter cut off is a bit lower here. So let's set it to... Yeah, somewhere, yeah, there, that's, that's about it. Let's copy the, let's see the other one. Okay, okay. Okay, let's grab that keyboard tracking again and let's put it on the fil filter frequency of four. Go back. Okay, I'm pretty happy with what we got so far. The next thing we we'll do here is engage this uh, attack because I believe I had a a slight attack. Oh no, we have an elf over here. On oh, the elf is supposed to modulate the filter three, so that's gonna add some differentiation throughout the track to the third filter. Then let me turn that on now. It's out of the LFO. Let's set it to be 16 bars, as I think I did over here. And we're going to route it to the filter frequency. We're going to route it as well to panning. And that's going to get kind of hectic some, 
somewhere along the line. And finally, let's add it to the filter peak. And it's here in the context of the whole track now. And you see how adding that um, modulation on the filter frequency or a filter three panning, we create this variation in the left and the right channel. So we can create this width that we didn't have before. So you can either have that there, or you can make it much more subtle. And you can appreciate there how using that XLFO on the filter panning and the filter frequency help us change the positioning of the two different uh, uh, channels on the filter. So as we can hear, some filtering is changing on the left channel, the right channel. And now we get this like wide effect. If we didn't want that, if we wanted the bass to be or the lead to be a little bit more mono, we can get rid of it and just have it be pretty drive forward. So this is something you should leave up to taste depending on the sound that you're creating. In my case, I removed it, but I was gonna automate it later on and off during the track. Because as you can see here, I still got some space left to keep on adding some more song structure. Now, if we go to the sound effects over here. Let's go to that noise. We can appreciate here how on the, I believe it's the fourth filter. We have the off pass and we have a pretty fast, as, as a matter of fact, it's a, the, as fast as you can get with the LXLFO and that's modulating the filter panning. But as you can hear,
along with the filter delay over here, I'm using it to create some phasing effects, which are actually kind of creating notes. Hear that? So let's go all the way back to how I was. All right, so I'm using it for that actually, which is kind of interesting because what we're doing here is we're grabbing a peak filter, which is, let's see, I believe it was filter number three. And that's being modulated by the, the slider over here. As you can see, I'm peaking. And again, I'm using the keyboard tracking on this sound again, so that the band is moving along with the melody. In this case, it's just playing G in four different octaves. Now, when you add the, the XL phone to the mix, you see that there's more harmonics added. Let's remove it. And that's simply the changing the phase from the XLFO on the off-pass filter. So we're making it move so fast that it creates some notes. So if I were to change the slope here, It changes what's in focus. Along with the delay here. I can change the, the way the phase comes in. So it's very subtle, but it works. Also keep in mind here that I'm bringing the drive of the filter down. So I have a little bit more headroom in some cases. And there's gonna be another example in the second video that we're gonna do on Fell Filter Volcano, where I'm gonna drive this with a kick drum and I'm gonna really, really push this drive. So we're gonna use a drive, but not just in this video. We're gonna use it in a different video. Okay, so you guys get the gist of this sound. We have another filter uh, cutoff on the high end and then one on the low end. And what's cool about this is that once we're using this uh, XY pad over here, we can control both the filter frequency of filter one and the filter frequency of filter two. So I can start to get DJ style effects. One thing you may have noticed at this point is that I'm not using a plugin like Grow Speed or gatekeeper to create a pseudo sanction effect. What I'm actually doing is using the envelope uh, generator here and I'm using the MIDI out signal. Let's actually open up MIDI here. And I'm having it trigger, of course, the notes, as I said, but I'm also having it cut off a little bit earlier so that it has a chance to play back and play a little bit of the release but also so I can use it as a sidechain trigger for the main uh, output gain here. Chase up. I could do the inverse if I wanted to. So I can actually have a sidechain built into the sound effects processor that I built with Volcano 3. And I call this uh, preset of mine white noise chord because I'm using the white noise 
as you typically would, you know, when, a dr- when the beat drops, you have it go whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. But in this case, I'm actually adding a little chord there. So now I can remember that not only am I using the white noise, but you can use the chord here. I also made another preset that has uh, just a regular white noise preset. So if I wanted to bounce to that one, I can use that one as a standard uh, white noise filtering uh, uh, preset. But in my case, I wanted to do something a little bit more um, like the sound effect you hear in the in the track from uh, Benny Benassi. And I think they use like a little hardcore screech and they have it go play um, a really high pitch noise. But in my case, I just use the noise. So it's cool. Um, now for the little vocal effects over here. Press Control D. I'm going to actually do that little sightseeing trick again. But in this case, I'm going to reverse it and create a gate in effect. So um, basically, it sidechains very slowly in throughout two bars, but there's also a gate on it. So let me show you how to do this. Let's grab a vocal like the one I have here. And there's some uh, delay already on it. And then I add a pro R. So we get a lot of these repetitions and this almost sounds like a pad now. And we have a little bit of length now to play with uh, Volcano 3, which is what we're going to do here. We're going to add a, I think it's uh, three filters in total. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, make this uh, make a new version of this preset for ourselves. Let's add a new volcano. Let's close the old one down. Okay, let's start off by creating that gated effect. Let's grab an XLFO. We're going to add a high pass filter. And we're going to add a third filter here. Now, this third filter is just going to act as a gain for the other two filters that are playing around. Okay? So just keep it there. That's the peak to zero. And we're just going to play with this level over here, right? So let's set the modulation from the X level there. We can make it slower if we want to. Now, one thing here is that since the modulation is um, going both upwards and downwards, um, we're going to have to bring the gain of the output level down. And now we almost get this gated effect, right? We can change this here. And change the glide as well, so we can get a gated effect. Now, the other thing we're going to do is we're going to add another XLFO. We're going to create four steps on this and make this two bars long. And now we're going to add a little bit of glide here. There we go. And we can mess around with this. Leave it somewhere around there.
Let's put this on the output. Let's bring the output down. Sorry about your ears. <laughs> Somewhere on there. Okay, now we're gonna add this modulation to the first filter. Let's go to the filter one frequency. And we're gonna set this to be a negative modulation. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add the modulation on the peak. You can already see what this is doing. So it's a very visual plugin. I really, really love that about it. You don't even have to really listen to it to see what it's, what it's gonna sound like. Okay, now we're gonna put the mix a bit down and we're gonna compare it to the original sound. The original is just a bit more aggressive on the Apple game. And on the peak, I believe. Let's also bring the filter frequency down a bit more. Okay. And let's just check the drive on some of these filters for a second. Nope, they all seem about right. And there we go. We created like this really ghosty effect for the vocal. And now this is, you know, kind of a techno-ish element. And we can include it pretty much in any of these dance type of songs. <laughs> And you can appreciate how that if sound effect leads right into the music. So I made it with that in mind. However, like I said, you can use it uh, in other dance type of songs because you also, you're always going to have that gated sound effect or a little snare build up right before, you know, a drop. OK, before I call it a day on this video, let's take a listen to the filter uh, shapes and the filter types here, because that's very, very important. Let's look at the main. Me here, and we're just gonna add one more volcano three, and let's set it to clean. We're gonna add the envelope generator, keyboard tracking, and I'm gonna go a lot quicker now because we should know what we're doing by now. MIDI input port four, and we can add a filter here. Let's set the filter frequency to be right around here. Okay. And I'm going to put this behind the other effects. Mute them. Okay, so that's the gentle filter. We have the classic filter.
now I'm going to add a peak on these and drive them. So you can really start to feel what the filter sounds like. I really like the extreme filter. It almost sounds like that 303, right? As a matter of fact, if you leave the peaking all the way up, you would have a resonant filter. So what you'd like to do is use the auto mute self oscillator and maybe also high quality mode. And now you get this really nice distorted sound. I really, really like that. Let's play with the envelope. Let's bring the filter cutoff even lower. Somewhere on here. That is ridiculously, really, really fat. So let's bring it back up here. Actually, we can just do this. Go back in time. Okay, let's uh, go to the next filter here. That one also sounds pretty aggressive. Yeah, I don't, yeah, they both sound pretty, pretty good, pretty acidy. So let's hop into the next one. So we can appreciate that all these filters have different characters, so they sound quite different. And we're not even, you know, getting into some of these other functions, so I'm pretty sure that once you run the extreme filter, put an all-pass mode, that's going to sound very different from the classic. So yeah, as you can hear, the extreme filter is kind of, you know, breaking down and creating like this chaos. So yeah, they sound quite, quite different. Okay, we're going to leave this video at this right here. In the next video, we're going to cover more about the drive, how to use the peaking and try to mangle around some drums, some kick drums, because I'm really, really liking how this, these filters sound, especially when you drive them. And with that, I'm going to end the video.
I hope you enjoyed it and that you learned a lot about Fat Filter Volcano 3. Make sure you like the video. Also, subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell so you stay up to date with our upcoming content. Once again, I'm Kevin Ochoa here at Music Marketing TV, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.